Today I've got a real treat for you. Today I want to take you on a tour of this early 60s model sheep camp. Um, as we go through this camp, you're going to see a lot of similarities between the camps that we build and this. Um, and a lot of that has come through experience in working on these camps, seeing what works, what doesn't work. And as I mean, as you can see, this camp for being built in the early 60s and being used every day since then is in exceptional condition. Um, if you were to take any of the travel trailers, I mean, if you think about it, how often does your travel trailer get used? You know, maybe three, four weekends a year if you're lucky. Um, whereas these ones were built, you know, to be used every day, to be basically a house on wheels. And so we've learned a lot of things through working on these as well as working on the RVs um, to see, you know, what, what we can incorporate into our camp to make them, you know, last a lifetime. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started and, and we'll kind of take a tour of this and I'll show you some things that, that really work well and some things that haven't worked so well. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and start. The first thing that you're gonna notice as you approach uh, a sheep camp, whether it's a new camp that we've built or whether it's one of these old camps, is the Dutch door. This is a, a really cool feature that each of the camps include. Um, but we often get asked what was the purpose of the Dutch door in these sheep camps. Well, the, the main purpose for it was to regulate the temperature inside the camp. And so they could keep that upper half open um, while keeping the lower half closed to keep the dogs and, and whatever else out and allow for some airflow to flow through the camp. Um, but really cool feature. Um, you can see this one, I mean, it's, it's still in pretty good shape for as old as this camp is, uh, but just, just really cool. I mean, gives it kind of that sense of nostalgia and especially on the new ones. I mean, very seldom do we build a camp that doesn't incorporate the Dutch door into it. So kind of cool. The next thing that you're gonna notice as you enter into the camp is the wood burning stove. Now, most camps um, in this time frame, the wood burning stove actually was up here in the front. Um, but this one, they've added the closet give them a little more storage and it's kind of interesting too this camp is about two feet longer than most of the camps that were built in this time frame so this probably would have been a higher end camp I'm I'm guessing the the herder was really ecstatic about receiving this camp but anyways the the wood burning stove is basically the center of the camp um, everything is built around it to where it's it's kind of a necessity um, it provides the heat as well as a cooking source for these herders. Um, they cook on the top of it as well as this has the oven and so they can bake in it. But as you can see, this one's definitely had some use. They've come in within, I'm guessing within the last five years or so and added this two burner cooktop to it. Really cool camp though. But as you look at it, do you notice some similarities between the camps that we build now and this old camp? Um, you've got the trundle bed, the, the pull-out kitchen table. But this, this would be considered a traditional layout. Um, and I will bet you that 8 out of the 10 camps that we sell are this same layout. Um, it's just a really roomy layout, lots of usable space, just just well thought out and so it's kind of cool to walk in one of these old ones and and see a lot of those similarities as you can see this doesn't have any of the bells and whistles that that we put in camps nowadays but we still sell a lot of camps to the agriculture guys as well as survivalists that don't contain a lot more than what this has um, the nice thing about this camp is there's not a lot of maintenance, not a lot of upkeep. Um, you know, it's, it's just a nice shelter to get out of the weather and, and get warm and have a place to cook. So really user friendly, um, but just overall really cool, really cool camp.
The exterior, there's a lot of similarities as well as what we built today. You'll notice the angle iron that run up the corners and along the bottoms. This particular camp is a wagon style setup, meaning the back axle and the front axle are separated. This one has a tie rod setup front end. And the agriculture guys really like the wagon style just for the fact if they're going through some rugged stuff and they get stuck, they can actually unhook the camp and pull the truck forward through it and then hook a chain to the tongue and pull the camp through. Um, they really like this. But let's just take a closer look at this frame. As you can see, a lot of the framework is actually wood, um, which is something, you know, that we've we've changed throughout the years and noticing how it holds up. Um, but we still build a ton of camps that are the wagon style setup. We either do them in a fifth wheel turntable type setup or a tie rod setup, depending on, on what your applications are. But there's, I mean, we get people that ask all the time, what's better, the wagon style or a tandem? Well, it really just depends on how you're using it. Um, the wagon style tend to stay in the same ruts and track right behind your truck, whereas the, the tandems tend to cut to the inside of the turns. Um, but the, the tandems are definitely a lot better to pull and you can back them up, whereas these are, uh, you, you've got to be pretty skilled to back one of these up. Um, this, this camp um, come in for some repairs on the ceiling. The roof was starting to cave in a little bit, and I'll go into some details of the way that they built these roofs back then um, and how we do it now to, to help to make that last. I mean, like I say, for a camp that was built in the early 60s and has been used every day, um, I'm guessing this has seen some pretty intense snowstorms, a lot of snowpack on that roof, um, but it's held up exceptionally well. And we've just taken, you know, those things that we've seen that, that have failed in that time frame and, you know, improved them. And so we'll take a look at that, but... That's kind of an overview of the exterior of this camp. And let's go ahead and check out the roof. So this is the roof structure of this camp. As you can see, they used a, a partial bows system which mainly it was just to give that exterior some integrity, but the problem was is you had no structure that spanned the whole length. And so on that exterior, I found on these old camps, the interior stays pretty good, um, but that exterior tends to collapse over time with, with dry rot and those things. Um, and so what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna run some bracing that'll run from the front to the back of the camp and then tie them bows into it to where it makes for a solid structure. On the interior of this, there is two two by fours that run down that center. Um, so you get some strength there, but like I say, it's the exterior that ends up suffering just because there's not as much support. Well, the R roof structure is we actually build a ridge beam that consists of two two by six that are doubled on each end and then they have dividers every two feet with another two by four that runs down the center of the camp. And then it's followed by our bows, arches, and then tied in with bracing along for that extra support. But in overall, it gives us six inches of insulation and just gives us a more solid structure to hold up to the elements and, and give us that rigid structure that we're looking for. Well, that concludes the tour of this old sheep camp. Hopefully, you've learned as much as we have. We always learn something as we tear into these old camps and and see, you know, what works and what hasn't worked. And obviously, you know, for a camp as old as this is, it's, it's held up really well. But we just want to make sure here at Peak Outdoors, we're providing a product that's going to be handed down from 
generation to generation and those memories are going to live on in that camp. And so anyways, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Like the video, it, it helps us out a lot. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks.